Right, it's Mr. Palmer here, another video in computer science. I'm trying to rush through this one to make sure I don't get locked into the building on a Friday night. Okay, so this one is um, about lexical and syntax analysis. Okay, forgive me if I'm talking really fast. So, uh, sorry, this, uh, before you continue with this video, I should say, make sure you've gone over your notes on lexi lexical and syntax analysis, all right? So this is the second one about cogeneration and optimization. So, uh, what the, the previous video looks at how lexical and syntax analysis perform. This one is discussing how machine code is generated and optimized, and we're looking at the relationship between a linker and library routines. Whoa, I'm, I'm not covering that one in this video, okay? Uh, I'm just looking at how uh, machine code is basically generated and optimized. So remember we went from abstract on the left hand side in a source code languages, uh, high level languages, to something that the machine needs to be able to understand. So it needs to be translated. So what is going on during the compilation phase? So the last video talked about taking your code code, and then turning it in, uh, how we're turning it into machine code. So we talked about uh, identifying the lexemes, breaking it down into the constituent lexemes that make up a, a line of code, tokenizing it, and t uh, replacing uh, the instructions with numbers that the CPU can understand. Okay, um, so so what basically parsing. Okay, we were breaking down the statement into its constituent parts. So now, once we've performed that lexical and syntax analysis, we then need to start talking about how uh, the actual code is generated and then optimized. All right. So code generation is the process of taking that and this was the the same um, example instruction hypothetical instruction that I showed you sorry the hypothetical line of code I showed you earlier and converting it to low level instructions or perhaps intermediate code all right and there's remember things you're gonna have to think about the reasons for wanting to use intermediate code remember that intermediate code is slightly less abstract than source code so although it is executable on a virtual machine for example perhaps okay um, sorry it's not executable on a virtual machine ignore me all right that's object code right um, the intermediate code is slightly less abstract than source code but it still is not uh, executable by a machine right so uh, what we would need to do during the code generation is basically um, take that um, intermediate code uh, or the um, the interim uh, code that has been generated and turn it into its low level operations that can be executed by by a CPU okay so um and basically that's what code generation is okay now code generation when you ge you don't have to generate um, um low level code that's machine executable you might generate intermediate code which is then turned into machine code later on okay it's easier to optimize intermediate code and also um the 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 compilation stage basically can um the, the lexical and the syntax analysis stage can be considered the front end because what you're doing is you're generating uh, code, uh, intermediate code, because then the intermediate code can then be compiled down to work on a particular architecture, CPU architecture. So that can be considered the back end. All right. So then remember the, what is the advantage of intermediate code that you make your code, your source code portable so you can um, use it on different architectures. All right. Now, optimization, right, is the process of um, improving that code. Um, I had an answer over there on the screen for you. <laughs> so, optimization is the process of improving the code so that you don't have um, uh, errors in. Uh, sorry, you you have it, it runs more efficiently. Okay, so if you look at these things, you should be able to see there are re there are things there are problems with. Um, this in terms of uh, that impact on the efficiency. So, for example, repeated calls to a variable, you would instead of having the uh, the the data located in uh, in primary memory, you'd move it to a CPU register to improve the efficiency. So, instead of waiting for the data to be transferred each time, it'd be there and ready. Okay. Um, all of these other uh, examples, they basically um, can be resolved by using algebraic algebraic identities. So, for example, x equals 50 times 2, well, x equals 100 x equals x plus 0 or y equals x minus 0 um, or x equals you know x times 0 they can all basically be replaced with um, their equivalent instructions so x equals x y equals x x equals 0 or in the example of the last one y equals 0 you can look those kinds of things up online other inefficiencies could be things like dead code so code that may never be reached okay um, during execution or things like loop invariant expressions you'd be like what does that second one mean? Well, look at this code, right? For example, so this is some Java. 
Um, I'm creating a scanner to read some data in. I'm declaring an array of where the data type is an integer and there are 500 elements in that array. Now my loop is looping from zero and the running condition is while i is uh, smaller than the array length. Well, that's inefficient, checking for the length of the array each time you run the loop. Wouldn't it be better to change your code to this, where you have specified um, that, for example, end is equal to the array dot length, so therefore i must be smaller than end. This is still probably inefficient, because in this case, if we know that the array is 500 in length, then i should just be smaller than 500, and that would make it um, uh, probably a bit more efficient. Although, if you wanted to change the length of the array in the future, that might cause some problems. Okay, but this is the point about um, uh, improving about optimizing your code is that it will automatic it will do things like pro things like this to improve the efficiency. Remember that um, the computer is not necessarily smart. Okay, so whatever, however it's been programmed, it will try to generate some form of optimization, and that optimization is never a replacement for good algorithm design in the first place. Okay. So um, the previous video looked at uh, how lexical and syntax analysis is performed. This video discussed how machine code is generated and optimized. And um, I will stick one up this weekend um, explaining the difference between a linker, uh, sorry, what the relationship between a linker and library routines are. So watch out for that final video in the series. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon.